Hello, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsych researcher, uh, parapsychologist technically, since I'm uh, having a paper uh, getting um, edited now for peer review, um, technical agnostic, Fortean skeptic, and Esper. Well, possible Esper, considering my uh, uh, statistically significant scores from before, but I don't know. Anyway. The reason I'm here to talk to you today is I'm doing a response to a video called uh, the Zombie Survival Guide. This uh, is a video which talks about how to shoot zombies and that sort of thing. One of the things which often a lot of zombie uh, survival guides, or even the Zombie Survival Guide, um, it goes into in depth a little bit in this, but it doesn't really cover what you actually need to do for in the event of a post-apocalyptic society fall um, if you're wanting to live with basic amenities as to how to live. Um, I would strongly recommend uh, picking up any one of a number of books on how to live off the land or how to farm or all that sort of stuff. The problem is, is that those books don't stretch very far and you need to worry about, um, well, what are you going to do in the event that you still need basics like medicine, toiletries, um, b uh, basic means of keeping food for prolonged periods, um, you know, basic necessities of life, education. Uh, what are you going to do in the event that society collapses and you are not able to locate a um, uh, you are not able to uh, you know locate a source of uh, of enough material to actually maintain uh, human society in the midst of a zombie man infestation or as is more likely in the midst of a uh, post uh, tech, post apocalyptic techno um, tech, uh, uh, you know a post techno uh, techno ecological crunch assuming that the the ninety percent of the human race uh, will get ki uh, assuming that the ninety percent of the human race gets killed uh, due to either a uh, due to either a um, a which, uh, a zombie infestation which resurrects and uh, chews uh, and turn converts ninety percent of the human race um, or which is more likely uh, that our leaders are uh, that our leaders don't pay attention to the warnings and the actual scientific data don't colonize our solar system and we uh, have societal collapse from uh, lack of uh, input of resources going in um, there are two ways that you can help you survive uh, save yourself um, plenty of these other videos here will describe how to um, shoot for zombies again the best one is headed for the head and the neck uh, if you're dealing with more real-life zombies, these will just be people who are very, very hungry and have figured out that you are food. Some people will resort to cannibalism. Traditional techniques for killing humans are very effective at that point. Um, still, however, uh, there are some uh, extremely strong humans who, uh, who, despite being shot in a limb or in an internal organ, will still find a way to get enough strength to come up and try to come after you again. Uh, there, is what, there are some examples of people who are that berserk enough that they will do that. At which point, again, headshot is still the best, or heart shot uh, when you're dealing with direct humans. Now, that being aside, here's the main reason I'm going to I'm going to uh, do this video. I'm also going to um, uh, you'll see it as re zombie survival guide for all the remaining uh, videos, but they will be a continuation of this video. Um, the uh, second uh, the second thing that you need to worry about is uh, prolonged survival. In the event that society falls, you need to be able not just to uh, get a gun and some matches and be able to move. You need to be able to know how to form a community and how to be able to survive without too much gear down over the next period of time. I've always talked about you know uh, various techniques like solar panels, recycling, what have you. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of tips on how to um, on how to survive, preferably with a band of people, um, not so much the loner, uh, but how to how to survive in a post-apocalyptic world without uh, having to scavenge totally or you know uh, when scavenging runs out how you can sur uh, survive a prolonged period you want to get a group of at least 40 to 50 people uh, the reason I suggest this is a basic at the basic numbers because this is enough to form a community um, enough uh, genetic diversity that uh, you can form a small town or a community and simultaneously hopefully enough people to um, form a small unit or band of soldiers if you will preferably a band of 10 to 20 should be uh, you know preferably roughly a two-fifths of that uh, you know which is 40 percent should be soldier the rest of them should be educated in some various different format or other the second thing you want to do is you want to get your hands on any vehicle which is not relying on fossil fuels um, good examples of this is if you have a diesel truck store up on vegetable oil uh, and also there is a uh, if you go to popular uh, popular mechanics for kids dot com there uh, or just 
type popular mechanics for kids online. There is a uh, they teach a basic uh, chemical reaction how, on how to take the glycerin out of vegetable oil. So this way you can use it without uh, uh, you can use it as fuel for a diesel truck without ruining your without ruining your diesel engine. Um, another possibility, if you can find any car which runs, uh, if you can find electric cars or any car which, uh, you know, um, you can rig that up for solar panel use. Um, if hydrogen fuel cells come out uh, as an economical source by the time post-apocalyptic uh, post society happens, get your hydrogen fuel cell car, preferably get a whole bunch, a whole fleet, fleet of them. Uh, simultaneously, uh, any car which has also been designed to run on ethanol. There will probably be plenty of alcohol supplies. Assuming uh, there probably still will be a reasonable amount of alcohol supplies uh, left, assuming that not everybody has uh, dr gone to their local bar and drunk themselves into a stupor because of the uh, end of the world coming. Um, but barring that, you should be able to find uh, a reasonable supply of alcohol that probably people won't necessarily all drink up. Uh, I mean, I know probably people will drink the shit out of whiskey, but wine is still available, and uh, as long as you can get it, uh, you know, uh, to, if, as long as you can siphon the, the ethanol directly out of it, that should be fine. Um, okay, uh, I will go in greater detail on chemical reactions in another video on how to uh, siphon off ethanol, uh, you know, take the ethanol out, uh, siphon off directly um, other stuff, uh, you know, how to siphon out the, veg the, the glycerin out of vegetable oil, that sort of thing, but that's a chemistry thing, and that'll be separate for another video. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to try to find an area which is um, relatively well secluded. Um, again, both uh, two reasons for this. One of which is um, one of which, of course, is that uh, you're dealing with a you're largely dealing with a group of population who are um, you know who are in, uh, you know again zombies will generally try to go in on high on high pressure areas. However, here's one thing that you do want to do. In the event that you decide not to leave the city, which is probably actually a better, uh, which is probably actually a better thing for you, unless you know how to farm, um, there is actually um, this is one thing they don't tell you in uh, in zombie movies. When they tell you uh, to go to a to a uh, to a low populated area to avoid contamination, in a zombie infestation, that's very fairly good, unless you get a post apocalyptic world run by zombies. At that point, you don't want to be going to low populated areas because of the fact that you and your fellow people probably chances are you don't know how to farm. You, uh, you know, and experienced farmers, they may not be willing to take you on. So here's an idea that you might want to work with. Um, I would recommend strongly learning, learning farming, but until then, you need a, uh, you need a way out in order to be able to, you need to be a way to be able to survive for an extra three, four decades while you're trying to train yourself and your children to be able to farm. So here's what I recommend. You move to the nearest power plant that you can get your hands on. Chances are a nuclear power plant is good because of the fact that that will, um, as long as uh, they don't go critical, they'll probably just be shut down. And um, actually, nuclear power plants are only good uh, insofar as you can find a nuclear scientist still in existence to deal with it. Failing that, go to a, any area where there is a local uh, power supply of windmills or any um, of the traditional power supplies as long as it's not run on... Um, as long as it's not run on fossil fuels. So chances are you want to be near a hydro plant, a, a windmill plant, a solar, pa a, a solar panel plant, which is highly unlikely, or uh, you want to be uh, close to an old style coal power plant, um, at which point you can just uh, try to find supplies of coal uh, to constantly put in there. Actually, coal is not that hard to manufacture. Uh, it is a fossil fuel. Um, but you know it isn't it, it isn't as difficult to manufacture you just simply uh, also you might want to do a little bit of research as to where coal deposits are so this way you can get uh, electric cars and the like to go and uh, and mine these coal deposits and the like and uh, start um, doing this the second thing you want to do machine shop supplies there are a good um, any of your local universities or colleges you'll find there's a decent uh, size um, machine shop uh, for machining parts for one thing or another um, it's a very, very geared down version of society. You might only be able to let, work at 19th century levels, but I would strongly recommend that if you are able, if you are able to find a power plant in the, um, if you are able to find a suitable area to get one, and um, the machine shop hasn't been wrecked by, uh, wrecked by all the zombies, I would recommend that you go in uh, with your group, uh, go in, get, um, go to the um, to the local library at the university, pick up all the books you possibly can on machining and how to, uh, you know, mechanics and machining and how to build your parts. Then um, go. Then take. Uh, then take your. Uh, you know, take all the books you possibly can back. Uh, the second thing you want to do is go to these machine shops, dismantle every single piece, and um, and while while under guard from zombies, take uh, dismantle your machine shops and transport them out to your local area. 
take a shed or something like that and set yourself up a, a reasonably decent uh, you know, metal machining shop. The reason I suggest this is because of the fact that, um, well, more in the next video. I'll explain then.